Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at his knowledge. He said, if I was to give these people a second chance to come back to this life where they will relive a new life, they would have done the same thing. They would have rejected Allah the same way. Inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu ballagha ar-risalata wa adda al-amanah wa nasaha al-ummah wa tarakana 'ala al-mahajjati al-bayda laylaha kana hariha la yazigu 'anha illa halik صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة أعدنا الله منها يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين في الدنيا والآخرة أيها المسلمون اتقوا الله تعالى وأطيعوه and my dear brothers and sisters in Islam and today our khutbah insha'Allah ta'ala is going to be uh, a continuation of the topic that we talked about last week which was a very important topic it was regarding al-ghafla heedlessness and insha'Allah ta'ala before I begin the topic I also just want to remind myself and all of you how blessed we are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with the day of Friday Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the opportunity to come all together in the masjid and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to sit there and be reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu anhu kana yaqul inna rajul la yakhruju min manzilihi wa alayhi min al-dhunubi mithla jibali tihama Umar radiyallahu anhu used to say a man would leave his house and on top of him are like in terms of sins are like the mountains of Tihama these are big mountains in Al-Hijaz and he used to say العلم, after he hears the knowledge after he hears the knowledge khaf, so when the person hears the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he listens to the ayat and the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the hikam and the wisdom from the, and our predecessors, what happens? Khaf. Fear comes to them and they go back and they make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, he said, فَيَنْصَرِفُ إِلَى مَنْزِلِهِ وَلَيْسَ مَعَهُ ذَنْبِ He will go back to his house and he will have no sin against him. Subhanallah. And when he came to the masjid, he, was, he wasn't able even to walk because he had mountains of sins on top of him. But now when he goes back home, he will be different because he has listened to the khutbah, he has listened to the study circle, and he has listened to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, listened to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the topic, and then Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he concluded by saying, لا تفارقوا مجالس العلم. Okay, never abandon the gatherings of knowledge. So one of the main gatherings of knowledge is the Friday prayer. So our young brothers, alhamdulillah, who are here now. So this is the opportunity. Whenever you get opportunity to come to the masjid for Friday prayer, you have to make it, inshallah ta'ala. Do your best. Mashallah, next couple of weeks, we'll, ha we'll have the schools off, the colleges, universities. So this is a good time to come. So inshallah ta'ala, the topic of discussion today, is I said, is al-ghafla. Ghafla, what does it mean? Ghafla means like heedlessness in English. And al-ghafla al-inghimasu fi dunya wa shahawat wa nisyan al-akhira fa yajtahidu al-ghafilu fi ta'mir al-dunya al-faniya wa takhrib al-akhira al-baqiya Subhanallah What does ghafla mean? It's like when you totally dive into this dunya and you are engulfed in it so you, all you think about is dunya 
You don't think about akhirah at all. And all you think about is your desires, your shahwat, your whims. And when it's yan al akhirah, you forget about akhirah. You don't really care about akhirah anymore. All you care about is this dunya, your desires, and what you like. And you just concentrate here too much. And inshallah ta'ala, last week we mentioned, and uh, there are certain signs that will tell you if someone is suffering from ghafla. How do you know if you are suffering from that illness? Ghafla is one of the illnesses that attacks the heart, the spiritual heart of the person. Ghafla attacks your heart, your spiritual heart. It puts you into sleep. And it was said, Al-Ghafla, Sultan al-Shaytan. Subhanallah. So Iblis, he made Ghafla as the Sultan of the heart. What does that mean? So he made and chose, because there are many sins, I mean like there are many illnesses that, that afflict, that come to the heart. There are many and, and, and illnesses that will affect our hearts. So the greatest one is, is Al-Ghafla, when you become totally heedless. So we said one of the signs that how would you recognize if you are suffering from that? Number one, At-Takasul Ani Ta'at. If you are someone who don't really want to pray Salah, for example. Or when you are praying, you pray the Salah with no energy at all. You feel like very weak when you are praying Salah. For example, Istisgharul Muharramat wa Tahawun Biha. Also when you belittle sinful actions. Any sin that you do, it seems to you like something very small. It's never big for you at all. All sins are okay for you. You get to another level where you become comfortable with the sin. And so comfortable that you would like to share it with other people. Like we mentioned last week, some people, they reach the level when they commit a sin, they don't just keep it secret from other people, they actually film themselves and they share it with the rest of the people. Subhanallah, that is a level of heedlessness. So that's another level, that's another sickness or another sign of knowing if someone is really affected. Number four, تضيعُ الوقت من غير فائدة. If you become someone who wastes their time, because wasting your time is wasting your life. Subhanallah, time in essence is life. And if you, waste your t- if you waste your time, and you're wasting your time all the time, every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year, we're coming to the end of the year right now. Only a few days are left from 2019. It was just a few, few, few months ago when we were saying, this is the beginning of 2019. It was just a few months ago when we said, this is 1441 Hijrah. And soon we'll see every, every year is coming to an end, subhanAllah. So that's another. Today though, what are we going to focus on? What are the things that cause you to fall into heedlessness? Asbab al ghafla. Why do we fall into this sin? Or why do our hearts become afflicted with this with the with the illness or the ailment of heedlessness? Number one, hubbu dunya. Each and every one of us, we should measure ourselves right now as I speak. You say, how much do you really love this dunya? What is it that makes you love this dunya? So, hubbud dunya, that's number one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, the non-believers, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا The people who don't believe in Allah, they don't believe in the akhirah, they know so well about this dunya. They invest so much in this dunya. All their life is invested in this dunya because they think that they have got no other life. This is the only life that they've got. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِلُونَ When it comes to the hereafter, they are heedless. They don't really care. Okay? They think there's no life after this life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al-Sajdah, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الْمُجْرِمُونَ نَاكِسُوا رُؤُوسِهِمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ رَبَّنَا أَبْصَرْنَا وَسَمِعْنَا فَرْجِعْنَا نَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا إِنَّا مُوْقِنُونَ well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, well, tara, If you were to see the mujrimun, the people who are transgressing today, people who don't know Allah, people who don't want to know Allah, people who don't want to know Akhirah, people who will say in front of your face, say to you, there's no God. People who will argue with you, people who will debate with you and say to you, there's no God at all. There's no Akhirah, after, uh, there's no life after this life. Those people in the hereafter, Allah has said, well, tara mujrimun. When you see these people, they will be lowering their heads. Okay, humiliating. Near their Lord. They will say, our Lord, we have seen today 
This is a reality. Rabbana absarna wa sami'na and we've heard it. Okay, we can see hellfire, we can see the angels, we can see everything. We can see all the human beings that are gathered together. So, farji'na na'ma Oh Allah, please take us back so we can do righteous deeds. Would Allah give them that chance? No. Why is he not going to give them that chance? Because that's what Allah has decreed. And not only that, Allah knows if he was to bring them back, they would have done exactly the same thing. وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ وَقِفُوا عَلَى النَّارِ فَقَالُوا يَا لَيْتَنَا نُرَدْ وَلَا نُكَذِّبَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّنَا وَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بَلْ بَدَا لَهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُخْفُونَ مِنْ قَبْلِ وَلَوْ رُدُّوا لَعَادُوا لِمَا نُهُ عَنْهُ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked at his knowledge. He said, if I was to give these people a second chance to come back to this life where they will relive a new life, they would have done the same thing. They would have rejected Allah the same way. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, we are Muslims. You must be so, you must be so, you're so blessed. We are so blessed. We should be saying, Alhamdulillah, we're Muslims. We don't have to go through all of this. Subhanallah. So you're a Muslim. You're in the masjid right now. You need to take heed from this. So, hubbu dunya. And, subhanallah, and uh, Nasr ibn Muhammad al-Samarqandi, this great halim, has said, Al-Nasu yusbihuna ala thalathati asnaf. He said, people, when they wake up in the morning, they are of three categories. Everybody who wakes up in the morning, he's one of these categories. You're going to fall into one of these categories. Number one, he said, sinfun fi talab al-mal. A category of people, they are only after money. They just want wealth. That's the focus. Every moment, every morning when they wake up, they just want to say, I want to see my bank balance go up. I want my money to, to increase. Okay, I want to become richer. As Samarqandi, what did he say? He said, when people wake up in the morning, they're one of three. Sinfun fi talab al-mal. A group, they just after money. They want money. Okay, and how, how many people are like that today? Some people, they wake up. They just look at their bank balance. As soon as they wake up in the morning, they just want to see how much do they have in the account. Some people will wake up in the morning and say, how am I going to make myself rich? Look at, look at the adverts. Whenever you open a YouTube video, before they allow you to watch that video, what kind of advert comes? A man who's going to say to you, or a woman who's going to say to you, do you want to make more money? That's all. That's all they're going to tell you. Do you want to make money without working for somebody else? What did he say? A category of people, they're just going to be busy with money. So they go and run after money. They don't care how they get that money, whether it is halal or haram. They don't really care. That's why we see, that's why we see many Muslims, some of our Muslim brothers and sisters in Islam, they are involved in haram. They're involved in making money in a haram way. That's why you see sometimes young Muslims going out selling drugs. You see young Muslims gambling. Why? They just want money. They just after money. Is money going to make you happy? No. Wallah, it's not going to make you happy. It's just going to bring you bad, bad things. It's very serious, brother. So, Samarqandi rahimahullah ta'ala has said, وَالصِّنْفٌ فِي طَلَبِ الْإِثْمِ Another category of people, all they chase after is sin. They'll just wake up and say, how am I going to commit zina tonight? I need somebody to sleep with tonight. Whenever they wake up, I want, how, I want to commit a certain haram. I want to do gambling. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to sell drugs. So they're just sinful. Always they're running after sin. Subhanallah. They just, I, who am I going to kill today? So I can stay in my position in power. Who am I going to get rid of? Who am I going to do this to? I, this is the other group of people. Was sinful fi talab tariq The third group, they are after the path, the straight path. And look after that what he said. رحمه الله تعالى he said فأما من أصبح في طلب المال فإنه لا يأكل فوق ما رزقه الله he said the one who woke up in the morning running after money he will never get more than what Allah has written for him regardless of how much effort you put in you're not going to get a penny extra than what Allah has written for you the second group he said ومن أصبح ومن أصبح في طلب الإثم the person who's after sin the person who's after haram things, he just wants to commit sins. That person, when he wakes up, how is he going to end up? 
that person, he's just going to be humiliated. He's just going to be, he's going to just commit sins. And, and he will be someone who's in trouble all the time because they commit sins. وَمَنْ أَصْبَحَ فِي طَلَبِ الطَّرِيقِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ As for the one who woke up looking for the path to reach Allah. That's his destination. He knows his purpose of creation. He wants to get to Allah. What about that person? أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ الرِّزْقَ وَالطَّرِيقِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless that person with what? With the wealth and the path that he was seeking for. This is the beauty, ikhwani. This is the beauty of, mashallah, not being in a state of ghafla. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. We just mentioned one سبب one cause of غفلة. The second one I just have to go over it very quickly. الجهل بالله not knowing Allah. والله the less we know Allah. The weaker our iman is going to be. The, the more we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the level and the degree of our knowledge when it comes to Allah, that is how we will be as good Muslims. That will be that will depend on how good Muslim you become. So Al Jahlu Billah, that's another cause. Al Ma'asi. When we commit sins, we fall into ghafla. The more sins we commit, the more we fall into heedlessness. So they work together. So you have to remember that. Also, Suhbatu Su, having bad friends. The more bad friends you have that influence you to do bad things, the more you're going to be falling into heedlessness. Also, brothers, tulul amal, having wishful thinking. You don't want to change at all, but you want things to change. You need to change yourself. Start by changing yourself. So it's very, very important. And inshallah ta'ala, I am going to finish, inshallah ta'ala, our khutbah today with al-ilaj. What is, what is the remedy? How can we rem- remedy this problem? What is the remedy? Number one, inshallah ta'ala, is the following. Al-ilmu billah. Know Allah. How do you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can you come to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By studying the Qur'an. Ikhwani, I, rem- I, I repeated this many times. The more we study the Qur'an, the more we come to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Qur'an only talks about three things. Like Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala has said, Man huwa Allah. وَمَاذَا يُرِيدُ مِنْكَ وَكَيْفَ يُرِيدُ هَمِنْكَ That's it. The Quran talks about only three things. Who Allah is, what does He want from you, how He wants it from you. That's it. The Quran only talks about those three issues. Very, very important. Number two, ikhwani. Dhikrullah, remembrance of Allah. That is another ilaj. That is another way of getting better, inshallah ta'ala, from that illness. Majalisul dhikr, going to the gatherings of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qira'atul Qur'an, reciting the Qur'an. That's ilaj as well. Each and every one of us right now, ask yourself deep down, how many of these things that the imam is saying, the khatib is saying right now, how many of them do I do? Do I need to change some of the things I do right now? To, to become better than to become better from the ghafla that I am in? You need to ask yourself, الدعاء والتضرع إلى الله. You need to make dua to Allah to help you achieve that. A tawbah, very important. Tawbah, like Umar ibn Khattab has said, when someone comes to the masjid, for example, or to the remembrance of Allah, he will come and he will have on top of him mountains of sin. But when he hears these words, the ilm, the knowledge when he hears, he is going to have fear in his heart. He's going to make tawbah. And then he'll go back home. Any one of us who wants to go back to his house this afternoon, after this Jum'ah prayer and Asr prayer, with no sins, insha'Allah ta'ala, all you have to do is make tawbah. Sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all the sins you have been doing. Okay? And that's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe them away. Subhanallah. Look how beautiful our religion is. This is the beauty of coming to Friday prayer, to coming to the gatherings of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم إن أردت بالناس فتنة فاقبضنا إليك غير خزايا ولا مفتونين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم استرنا ولا تفضحنا اللهم استرنا ولا تفضحنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وكلنا ولا تكن علينا اللهم لا تدع لأحد منا في هذا المقام الكريم ذنبا إلا 
غفرته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا عاصيا إلا هديته ولا عاصيا إلا هديته ولا طائعا إلا سددته ولا حاجة هي لك رضا ولنا فيها صلاح إلا قضيتها يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة